Hey, hey, hey! There's my girls. Anise, uh, we missed you. Welcome home, little guardians. Auntie Allo, how have you been? Auntie, <laughs> okay. <laughs> they must be zonked from all that schoolwork, right, Sage? You cannot begin to imagine. And you know, then there was that time I transmuted the school cat into a nine-foot behemoth. But we don't talk about that. Since we've already spent two whole episodes at the central milieu of our tale, I guess it's high time we get the fuck out of there. It would be nice if the girls had some actual stories to share with their folks. Some personal growth to reflect upon. Perspective gained. Knowledge accumulated. But no, the heroes of our tale return from their non-adventure. For the time being, the exact people as they left. Placing the ending of the classic hero's journey smack at the center of the narrative is just weird. At best, it's a bump in the road, a waste of screen time. And at its worst, it squanders a perfectly good setup for emotional reunion. All this lovey-dovey hugging would have been better served at the end of the tale, the epilogue of the final episode for example, if the girls had actually spent any decent length of time apart from their loved ones, and faced hardship, returning to the warm embrace of home would reach entirely different emotional peaks. It would be a wholesome reward for the heroes at the end of an arduous path. There won't be any of the sort in this show, obviously, but if there were, the reunion at the end would feel like regurgitating a previous scene, it would be whatever. Naturally, part of the problem is the fact that the support network of each of the girls is such a teensy rock throw away. There's no true sense of adventure, venturing into the unknown, when the entire show basically takes place at the backyard of your lesbian cousin. But perhaps this reunion will at least give the chance to deepen the supporting cast, some meaningful interactions, and defining attributes, beyond Tumblr Dyke parody number 463, and a baking housewife elf. Are you ready for your greatest challenge yet? Beignets! Fuck me for asking. And just as a quick side tangent, because I already went over this, but it keeps pissing me off. The elf casually uses teleportation magic all the time for the most frivolous things. Old magic, mind you, at no apparent cost. Now in any conflict in the show, anytime anyone is in trouble, the immediate question from the audience will be, why not simply teleport? Transport yourself to safety? or transfer the tools you need right into your hand. The stakes of this show are non-existent. Every magic user should be spamming this one spell, resolving every single conflict as soon as it arises. Limitations are good. Limitations make us think. Limitations force us to become creative. So please, save your story from starvation, give it stakes, and give your magic limitations. Meanwhile, this show is busy making every single aspect of magic as nonsensical as they can be. To welcome Sage back home, the diverse characters have prepared a special present for her. Go on, open it! Uh, okay, okay. We thought it might help you at school. It's... Uh... Do you like it? <laughs> she loves it, right, Sage? I... Here, you just hold it like this. Oh, oh. Whoa. Whoa. It's rather strange. Every other Terra Sphere we see in the show is far simpler by comparison. So why does this one have such an outlandish design? Why would anyone buy this huge gilded staff for Sage and expect it to be the right fit for her? And it looks mighty expensive. Come to think of it, 
Where does the diverse couple get their income? Do they have jobs? It's never mentioned. Does one of them live off some hefty inheritance? They must be relatively wealthy, considering their high standard of living. Where's the money coming from? In fact, no aspect of the world's economy is ever brought up. We don't even know what this world uses as currency. Coins? Bills? Gold? Gems? Rubies. Or is this some kind of naive utopian fantasy, where anyone can just get anything they want for free? Considering the hashtag small budget of this show, one would think the creators had put at least some thought into it. Oh no, you hate it. It's no good. She's too sweet to say it. We'll take it back. We'll go first thing tomorrow and get you one that fits. Great! Well, hot diggity, strap in for an amazing adventure. Friends for a lifetime, amazing adventures. After three episodes of nothing, followed by nothing, and even more nothing, this is seriously what the show thinks as acceptable storyline to keep the audience entertained. A shopping trip with the diverse couple. Half the episode is spent on this plotline. A trip to the shop to exchange a faulty product. That, along the usual serving of nonsense. Hmm. Hey, are you okay? Rosemary, I... I don't want a Terrasphere. It's not right. I'm not... I don't do new magic. My mom would be livid if she knew about this. Sage is reluctant to have an all-powerful magic trinket because her mom wants her to practice old magic instead. Because new magic is... bad. For some reason. Well, it was a moronic thing to allow Sage to attend High Guardian Academy, if that's the case. Let's put this to rest once and for all. There is no conflict here. All of this is idiotic. Either Sage learns what the Academy demands, regardless what her mom says, or she does not and packs her things and fucks off back to Pebble. There's only two choices. Schools have a set curriculum, the Academy is the one to decide what they teach and how they teach it. You cannot just walk into a web design class and demand you be allowed to do oil paintings all day and still pass the class. This is not how life works. You either study the things you are there to study, or you don't. The school should demand the use of Terraspheres, since they are so omnipresent in society and the gold standard for spellcasting. Better yet, if this is such a prestigious academy, reserved only for the best of the best, with the purpose of making their students as effective at their job as humanly possible, then by all logic, they should provide Terraspheres for each of them. And if Sage truly wants to practice only the use of traditional magic, then she should have never come to the academy in the first place. Stay home and learn from your mother, she is most definitely an adequate teacher in old magic, I'm sure of it. Stop your whining, you miserable cunt, take some responsibility for your life, and make some goddamn choices instead of just whinging all the time. As you may have noticed, my patience with Sage is growing mighty thin. Now as for the magic shop itself, here we have a golden opportunity for the show to thoroughly explain the nature of new magic and Terraspheres. We are literally inside a store specializing in that specific subject. But instead of capitalizing on it, we get introduced to yet another waste of space character. She's elbow deep in uh, turnips. Hey, slime boy! Haven't seen you in a grog's age. How's school? Oh, it's fine. We're in break. We, we got catapulted out because of a traveler infestation. You go to High Guardian? Yep. We're there too! I'm Rosemary, and this is Sage. We're first years. Sage is on the magic track, and I'm a warrior. I am Slime Boy. You're... you're what now? That's what everyone calls me. I, I kind of like that. 
uh, you know, it's the same slime, and then boy. Why did they call you that? I got caught with ink legs in, in my dorm once. You know inkles? They're um, slimy. So. Okay, excuse me. But is this supposed to be funny? Charming? Quirky? Why would anyone think this is entertaining? What exactly is the point of this character? Why does he exist? Here he is, manning the shop, something that could have been done by any no-name character, and then he appears a couple of times as a student of the academy, where his only contribution is the fact that he strums a harp. Riveting! Once again, instead of using their finite screen time and budget, let's not forget about the goddamn budget, part of which goes to voice talent, mind you, instead of using their resources on proper character development, world building, focusing on things in desperate need of fleshing out, the creators keep gifting us with one useless rando character after another, with nothing of substance to offer. And it's not aided by the fact that every line uttered by this moron makes me physically wince. He speaks as if, as if he has his asshole full of maggots, like he needs a shot of heroin real bad, like he is utterly perplexed by the concept of enunciation. Okay, so this person just plays himself. That's not cringy at all. Excellent feather in your cap there, buddy. Being associated with this trash fire of a show. <laughs> but of course. But of course. And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end. For liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.